everybody names. Mickey Miles. And he held a balloon. Well, show and he the said, Hey, do yeah. you want to go on the walk with me? And then the Minnie Miss, I am with Minnie beat up the robot and then, then the robot turned into the walk Okay. Oh, sorry. Huh? And who is that story for? Lisa. Everybody. Everybody. The mm -hmm. end. Bye. 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 All right. Today we are talking about Nicodemus, and the point of Nicodemus is go to the source. And we find Nicodemus in one book. Um, we find him in John. So we're going to look at John chapter 3, 1 through 15, John chapter 7, 45 through 52, and John 19, 38 through 42. Um, just kind of like last week, um, we talked about um, Nathaniel, and he was only found in one book of the Bible. So Nicodemus goes along the same lines. And some back history for Nicodemus, he was an important Jewish leader, and he's only mentioned in the Gospel of John. He was a Pharisee, and if you were a Pharisee, you were against Jesus wholeheartedly. Um, you wanted nothing to do with them. You see, they were those responsible for getting him killed. So... You would think if I just stopped right there that Nicodemus was not a good guy. Um, Nicodemus was also a member of the Sanhedrin, and he was very educated. And he was educated in the Jewish religion. So being an educated man, he should know right from wrong. And we're going to see that Nicodemus, even though he is a Pharisee, even though he's supposed to hate Jesus, even though he is not supposed to believe in Jesus, we see that he's not that way. And John 3, verse 2 tells us that what did Nicodemus do? He went to see Jesus. He wanted to talk to him. He needed to talk to him. It's something he felt compelled to do. But if this doesn't fit into the world today, people criticized him. He went at night. Now, why did he go at night? Some thinks he was being sneaky. So he's up to no good. He didn't want to get caught. Well, I can see that viewpoint because you know, you're supposed to hate this man. You're part of the Sanhedrin. You're a part of. You're a Pharisee. You're part of these people that you're supposed to um, have nothing to do with Jesus, and yet you're wanting to go see him. So okay, I can see that at night. Um, but also I can see it as well. We went at night because guess what? What did Jesus do all day? He went around and he talked to people and he traveled. There was no one-on-one -on -one time. There was no rest time for Jesus. When did he get rest time? At night, by himself. I can see that viewpoint too. But when I say you can see the world in this, think about today. I've always been told my whole life, if you're out after X amount of time, you're just up to no good. Okay, And that time for me has um, quickly gotten sooner and sooner. You know, I would say... When I was growing up, it used to be 2 o'clock, and then when I was out driving, it was midnight. And then when I got in my 20s, it was about, well, I'm close to my 30s. It's like, well, if you're out after 10 o'clock, now for me, if you're out past 8 o'clock, my kids go to bed at 7 o'clock. If you're out past 8 o'clock, you're up to no good. Now, I'm exaggerating, but that is how I grew up. Um, anything after midnight, if you were out, that nothing good happens after midnight. Well, think about it. I don't know what time Nicodemus went to see Jesus, but it was dark. So what is the human first response? He's up to no good. He's up to something. What is he up to? No one thinks the second of, hey, this is Jesus. He wants to learn more about Jesus. He wants to go to the source. He has questions he wants answered. People don't go that way. We always tend to go the first way. So we got to watch ourselves. But we don't know. We don't know. Now we do know later why Nicodemus went. But... This is a huge thing. Um, and part of it may have been he was scared. He was a Pharisee. If the other parts of the Sanhedrin, other members of the Sanhedrin found out that he went to see Jesus, he probably would have been killed on the spot. And we will see later at the end of this devotional that he does get kicked out of the Sanhedrin for this. But it was a tough call for him to make. This was huge. This was huge that he decided to go out and talk to Jesus. He um, Not only did he go... When Nicodemus sees Jesus, he admits that Jesus is a teacher from God. 
So once he admits this, Jesus sits down with them and he takes this opportunity to tell Nicodemus how he can change his life, how he can be saved, how he can become a Christian. He tells them how he can get to heaven. Jesus took that opportunity. But like us, Nicodemus didn't understand. He did not understand what Jesus was talking about because Nicodemus, the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, the people were looking for a physical kingdom. They were waiting for a physical kingdom to come. Jesus was talking about a spiritual kingdom. Nicodemus didn't understand spiritual kingdom. People today have a hard time understanding spiritual kingdom. It's not something you can see, you can touch, you can, you know, point out. It's spiritual. And, but that didn't stop Nicodemus. And Nicodemus kept studying. Nicodemus kept going to Jesus. They kept having these talks. And um, John 3, 7 through 21, it says Jesus met privately with Nicodemus. Now, I don't know how many times they met. I don't know. In my mind, this reminds me of like a personal Bible study. He went. He wanted to learn more. I think it was more than once, but I don't know. I don't think it was a one and done thing. It could have been a one and done thing, but I don't know. Because we see in verse 2 that he went to see him. In verse 7, we see he met privately with him. Now, this could all be the same time. It may be more than once. I don't know. It's Jesus. It may only take one time with Jesus. Um, with us, it's going to take more than once. But either way, whether he met one time or whether he met multiple times, he did it privately. He did it where he could sit down and he could learn. And he was interested. And he wanted to know more about Jesus, even though he was thoroughly confused. Even though he's looking for something physical, Jesus is talking about spiritual. Nicodemus still went. Nicodemus still asked questions. Nicodemus wanted to learn. Well, then a little while later, we keep going down through Nicodemus's life. We know he's part of the Sanhedrin. We know he's a Pharisee. The Pharisees hate Jesus. So they come up with this plan to kill Jesus. And lo and behold, take a guess who steps up. Nicodemus steps up. John 7, verse 51. Nicodemus says, does our law, our Jewish law, the Pharisee law, the Sanhedrin law, the law that we obey, the law that we follow, does our law judge a man before he hears him and knows what he's doing? So Nicodemus is trying to give Jesus a little bit more time. He's standing up for Jesus. He's at this point now. He's not against Jesus. Now, everything I've read, I don't know if Nicodemus ever was against Jesus. Um, his class, his social class, his reputation, the people he was part of, yes, they hated Jesus. But to me, if I hated somebody, why would I want to go learn more about them? Why would I keep wanting this interaction? Why would I want to learn? So I don't know how deep the hatred goes. Um, it ma makes me think that Nic Nicodemus was not a follower, that he had a mind of his own, that even though he was part of the Sanhedrin, he knew, okay, hey, this may not be right. I want to go see for myself. And when he went and saw for himself and sat down and talked to Jesus, he changed. You started seeing a transformation happen. So now the tables are turned. Nicodemus has a chance to, I don't want to say repay Jesus, but help Jesus out, give Jesus a little bit more time. And he stands up and goes, wait a minute. Why are we going to kill him? Why we don't we, you know, we listen to everybody else first. We listen to everybody else plead their case. We listen to everybody else, you know, say that they're innocent. Why can't we let Jesus do this? So, it didn't help. They ended up killing Jesus. We know the Pharisees got their way. Jesus is crucified. The last time we hear about Nicodemus is at the crucifixion. After Jesus is dead, after Jesus has died on the cross, they take his body down. We all remember Joseph of Arimathea going and asking for his body. But Nicodemus is not called by name. But it says the one who came in the night was also there. It's Nicodemus. What did Nicodemus do? He went to Jesus in the night to talk to Jesus, to talk to him privately one-on-one. -on -one. Then it says Joseph and Nicodemus took Jesus' body and they properly buried it. Well, it tells us, too, that Nicodemus provided 75 pounds of myrrh and aloes. This was to cover the body, to make it smell good, to do its proper wrapping, to give him a proper burial. But what does 75 pounds of myrrh symbolize? And myrrh and aloes, he's rich. He's got some money. He's wealthy. And what does that say? It reminds me of the woman who anointed Jesus' feet with oil or the perfume. You know, she bought this big expensive 
thing of perfume. I don't know how big it was, but she bought an expensive thing of perfume. And what does she do? She dumps it all over his feet. She just wastes it. It goes all over the floor, and people have a conniption. They just think she's the craziest woman ever. But what? That meant the world to Jesus. Same thing here. Even though Jesus' body, Jesus is dead, it symbolizes. What does Nicodemus putting 75 pounds of myrrh and aloes symbolize? How much he respected Jesus. How much he wanted to give back. How much he wanted to do. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say for his friend. For somebody that changed his life, that gave him the opportunity. Would he have ever had this opportunity if he wouldn't have went directly to that source? Now think about that. If he wouldn't have had enough courage to get up, leave his group of Pharisees, leave the Sanhedrin, and go and talk to Jesus, would his life ever have been changed? Probably not. Probably not. Because he's with people who hated Jesus. Now, he helped Joseph and Matthew wrap Jesus' body, give him a proper burial, and then after that, we don't know. We don't know. There are four, three different beliefs, three different things that may have happened. Um, one... Some say that um, he was baptized by Peter and John. That since he became a Christian, or he did become a Christian, and the tradition is you be, you're baptized, some believe that Nicodemus was baptized by Peter and John. Some believe that he suffered persecution, that he was thrown out of the Sanhedrin. He suffered for what he did. He suffered for becoming a follower of Jesus. Then lastly, some think he was martyred for his faith. All three of those possibilities May have been true. All three of them may have happened. He may have been baptized. He may have been thrown out of the same heater. And then he, may have been be, then he may have been killed for believing in Jesus. I do not know. We do not know what happened to him. But we do know that um, he has, um, he played a big role. Just a one book person. Couple of chapters about him. Didn't really do anything big. The biggest thing he did is he went and talked to Jesus. He went and talked. He went to the source. So, there are four things that we can learn, and I like them, so I'm just going to read straight from the book because these are her four points. I couldn't have said it any better. The first one is, don't let a difficult situation keep you from Jesus. Even if Nicodemus really did go to see Jesus at night out of fear, the important lesson for us is that he went. He did not let the late hour or the fear of his companions in the Sanhedrin keep him from Jesus. Sometimes it's hard for us to show that we are Christians. Maybe our family makes it difficult for us to be faithful. Our husbands may put a stumbling block in our paths. Perhaps it is our jobs, our friends, our co-workers who prevent us from living the Christian life. Nicodemus struggled with his circumstances, but in the end, he took a, took a stand for Jesus. So, the first thing, don't let a difficult situation keep us from Jesus. Secondly, if you are struggling with questions or doubts, go to the source. Nicodemus did not go to anybody else. He went strict directly to Jesus. He wanted to sincerely know the truth, so he went directly to the source. Um, we have that source. We have the scriptures. We can go directly to the scriptures to hear the words of Jesus for ourselves. We cannot depend solely on the minister or a teacher or anyone else to tell us the truth, because they may lead us astray. If we go directly to the Bible, we know we're learning the truth. So, questions, doubts, go source. Thirdly, Nicodemus did what he could. First, he spoke up for Jesus. Secondly, he buried him. Unlike other Jewish religious leaders, Nicodemus did not allow the scorn of his peers to keep him from following Christ. If you have the opportunity, as Nicodemus did among the members of the Sanhedrin, speak up for Jesus. Every time you proclaim Jesus, you will be glad. Matthew 10, 32. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. So, Nicodemus did what he could. Lastly, continue your journey in Christ. We see a progression of the faith of Nicodemus. He was searching for the truth. Then he spoke up for Christ, and then he showed his love for Christ by his actions. You may not feel like your spiritual life is where it should be, but don't give up. It's a journey. We must continue to let our faith develop, for it to grow, for it to mature, and to be able to show our love in Christ in all that we do. So, I think that's pretty spot on. Um, Nicodemus, he 
had a difficult situation. He had a choice to make. He wanted to know about Jesus. He wanted to talk to Jesus, but he knows the consequences. Um, he knows he went against his people, the people he was, I guess, his job, that he went against the Sanhedrin. And he did it anyway because he had questions. Not to say he had doubts. He had questions. Well, he didn't have some doubts because when, you know, he's looking for something physical and it wasn't there. But he still went to the source. That's the main thing for me out of this lesson. And that's what hit home, hit, hits home to me. And my mind keeps going back. Because how many times do we have a problem with somebody? Or we hear something. That somebody comes up to you and says, So-and-so said this about you. Or so-and-so said you did this. And we get so mad. And instead of going to that person and saying, Okay, this is what happened. This is what I did. This is what I didn't do. What do we do? We get mad and we go and tell the third so-and-so. Can you believe so-and-so told me that so-and-so and it's just so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. And all it does is get everybody riled up, everybody mad, when if we would have went directly to the source and said, hey, I did do this or I didn't do this or, you know, th this is what I'm being told by you, it has stopped. And that's a bad situation. But again, what about going to the source when it comes to Jesus? What about if we want to invite somebody to church? Are we going to go around the world? Are we going to invite? Um, we want to invite our friend, but instead of inviting our friend, we're going to invite her neighbor. And then, but once we talk to her neighbor, then we're going to invite the grandmother. Then if we invite the grand, we go around the world before we ever get to that person we invite. What if we just go to that source? And that's the biggest thing for me today that I see is everybody goes everywhere but the source. And Jesus doesn't want us to do that. And where does it tell us in here to go to? It tells us to go to the Bible. Our Bible, Nicodemus had the privilege to go and sit down and talk to Jesus one-on-one. -on -one. We've got the Bible. When we've got questions, when we've got doubts, where is it telling us to go? It's telling us to go to the source. Go to the Bible. There's, And I've been told all my life, and I find it more and more that it's true, there is not a real life situation, a real life, anything you're going through, whether it's good, bad, family, church, whatever, that there is not a situation similar in the Bible where the Bible will tell you what to do, what's right and what's wrong. But how many times is the Bible our last source to go to? We want to go to everybody else. We want to go to the internet. We want to go everywhere but where God tells us to go. We need to be like Nicodemus and go to the source. Next week, we're going to talk about the man born blind, a miracle made of clay. So that is what we're going to talk about next week. I hope everyone has a great week, and I will see you here next week.